Good day, grade 8 learners. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm your learning facilitator, your teacher, Lara. Please settle yourself in the most comfortable space at your home to be more productive for today's session. And make sure that all the materials that you need for today's lesson is within your reach. Are you ready? Okay, let's start our session with a prayer. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you've provided for us all. We thank you for your protection and love. And thank you for this opportunity to learn. As we go on through today's lesson, may you make us instruments to do good things. Help us to focus our hearts and minds on what we are about to learn. Give us the strength to participate in our activities and guide us as we discover more about the world around us. All these we ask in your powerful name. Amen. With today's lesson, let us have a short review. Take a look at this picture and tell me what are these made of? Correct. All of these objects are made of matter. Now what is matter made of? Right, matter is made up of particles like atoms and molecules. Now, which of these particles is the smallest? Yes, it is atoms. For today's session, we will determine that atoms are made up of subatomic particles. We will also differentiate the particles according to their masses, electrical charges, and location. And lastly, we will determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in a specific atom. In our last session, I left you with some questions to discuss with a partner. I ask you to have a chat so that you can come up with the answers. So I hope that you did your part to find the answers to the questions because you will be needing that in our first activity this morning. All matter are composed of atoms. Understanding the structure of atoms is critical to understanding the properties of matter. So to start with, let us have our first activity. You are going to prepare a pen and your notebook to write down your answers. Are you ready? Okay, let us play fat or bluff. I will show you some statements. If you think that the statement is correct, you write fat. And if you think that the statement is false, you write bluff. So for our first statement, atoms are made of three subatomic particles. Is it a fat or a bluff? For second statement, all subatomic particles have the same relative mass. Statement number three, each subatomic particle has an electrical charge. Statement number four, the location of each subatomic particle changes with different elements. And statement number five, proton number determines the identity of an atom. I'll give you two minutes to write down your answers. A few minutes later. My time's up. Let us check if you got your answers correctly. Check your answer on screen. Okay, how many correct answers did you get? I hope you got it all perfectly. But if not, that's fine. We will discuss all of this in today's lesson. Now that we know that atoms are made up of subatomic particles, let us now explore it further so that we can find out what are the differences among these particles. Let us have another activity. For those who have internet connection, we are going to create a virtual atom using FET simulation. 
website for this activity is found in the description box below. Just click on the link and you will be directed towards the activity page. Once you click on the link, you will be directed to this site. Click on view full screen and then symbol. Make sure that the periodic elements are shown. If not, like this, just click on the plus sign to show the periodic table and also the symbol. Make sure to show the element, the neutral or ion, and the stable and stable. All three has to be checked. And make sure that you are here on orbits. Okay, so this is now Bohr's template of an atom. You can see the X mark at the center and the broken lines at the side to represent the orbits. You have protons, neutrons, and electrons at the bottom. And then on this side in the upper left corner, you can see protons, neutrons, and electrons. These will serve as counters. So let us start. If I will put one proton, you can see that it the proton automatically goes towards the center. And once you have one proton, you now have your element hydrogen. So hydrogen has a symbol of H and it is found in this side of the periodic table. It shows that the atom is stable and a positive ion. Ion tells us that we need electron. So I'll add electron and the electron goes towards the orbit. So as you can see here, you will see in the symbol H with one for the mass number and one for the atomic number. You will also see here that it has one proton, zero neutron, and one electron. So, if we will add a neutron, then you will see here one neutron, and then here in the symbol, the mass number becomes two, but the atomic number is still one. Okay, so hydrogen has one proton, one neutron, and one electron. If I add another proton, the hydrogen now becomes a helium. So your element changes. So it is stable and a positive ion. That means I need electrons so that I can get my neutral atom. So as you can see, helium has two protons, one neutron, and two electrons. And as seen here, the symbol of helium is He. It has a mass number of three and atomic number of two. The two here in orange tells us that there are two protons, like here. And the three here in the mass number tells us that there are two protons and one neutron. Okay, what about if I will add another proton? So your helium changes, it becomes a lithium. This time, it is unstable and it is a positive ion. Since it is unstable, it means I need to add neutron to make it stable. And then since it's a positive ion, that means I need to add electrons to make it a neutral atom. So the element lithium has three protons and three neutrons. That's why you have a mass number of six. And then, as you can see, there are also three electrons, like here. And then, since it has three protons, then your atomic number is also three. So, if I will add this one. So, if I will have five protons, it becomes boron. It's unstable and a positive ion. So, I need to add neutrons to make it stable. And I need to add electrons to make it neutral. So now you can see that boron has 5 protons, 5 neutrons, and 5 electrons. So mass number is 10 and atomic number is 5. If I will take out electron, it is still boron but it is a ion. If, for example, it is neutral, and then I will take out neutron and proton, 
So, this now becomes beryllium with negative ion. So, that means I need to add neutron and I need to add no because it is negative. So, we will not add. Instead, we will remove to make it a neutral atom. So, your goal here is to have a neutral atom and a stable atom. So, as you can see, uh, protons have four, electrons also has four. So, protons and electrons always have the same number. So, please continue with this one for elements number 6 to 10 for your activity. And for those who have no internet access, you are going to make use a paper model of an atom using the activity sheet given to you with Bohr's template and the small square pieces of paper to represent your subatomic particles. You will be given 5 minutes to finish this activity. But in case you need more time, you may pause this video and just restart it when you are ready. Okay, time starts now. Time's up! Okay, let us check your answers. Did you get it correctly? Very good! If not, don't worry. You, you can just review this video and try it again. Okay, so based on our activity, can you now tell me what are the subatomic particles? Correct! We have protons, electrons, and neutrons. Now, can you tell me, do these Subatomic particles have the same relative mass? Correct! They are different because protons and neutrons have the same relative mass, which is 1 AMU or atomic mass unit, but electrons are much smaller with 0 atomic mass unit. Now, what about their electrical charges? Do they all have electrical charges? No. Because protons are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged, but your neutrons are neutral. That means they have no charge. Now, what about the location? Can you find them in, diff in the different places or the same place in the atom? Correct. You can always find your protons and neutrons in the nucleus, which is at the center. And you can find your electrons surrounding the nucleus in the electron cloud. Now, based on the activity, which atomic particle now will give you the identity of your atom? If you answer protons, then you got it correct. Now, each atom has a characteristic number of protons. And you have to remember that the number of protons will tell us the atomic number. And if an atom has the same atomic number and the same chemical properties, that means that these atoms belong to the same element. At the periodic table of elements, you will see the following information. You have your element name and element symbol, the atomic number, and the atomic mass number. Based on this information, you will be able to identify the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons of your element. How are you going to do that? You are going to use the eight-man mnemonics. So in eight-man mnemonics, eight means atomic number, proton number, and electron number. These three numbers must always be equal. Now for man, you are going to subtract mass number and atomic number in order to get your neutron number. So let us have an example for this one. Let us have fluorine. So fluorine with symbol of F has an atomic number of 9 and a mass number of 19. So following 8 man mnemonics, what would be the number of protons and electrons? 
Yes, it has to be also 9. Because the atomic number is 9, and 8 mnemonics tells us that 8 has to be equal, that means that proton and electron should also be 9. Now, for the number of neutrons, since we have our mass number of 19 and atomic number of 9, we subtract the 2 and then we get the result of 10. This becomes your neutron number. So, another example, let's have potassium. Potassium has atomic number 19 and mass number 39. So, following 8 mnemonics, how are you going to identify its proton, electron, and neutron number? Yes, so we have 8, which is equal. So, atomic number is 19. That means proton is also 19 and electron should also be 19. Now, for man, since your mass number is 39 and your atomic number is 19, when you subtract the two, then it gives you your neutron number, which is 20. So, did you get it? Now, if, for example, you, still, you are still a bit confused, you just uh, rewind this video and then listen to it again. Okay, let us now practice in determining the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons of an atom. Let us follow the eight man mnemonics. I will give you two elements to identify. You make use of your notebook and pen to answer the questions. So, make sure to identify the protons, electrons, and neutrons of the following elements. First, we have sodium with a symbol of Na, atomic number 11, and mass number 23. And our second element, oxygen, with the symbol O, with atomic number 8, and mass number 16. Please identify the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons of these two. I will give you 5 minutes to finish this exercise. Time starts now. A few minutes later. Okay, time's up. Let us now check your answers to our exercise. Let's have element number one, sodium. So, sodium has atomic number 11 and mass number 23. So, what would be your proton and electron and neutron numbers? So, for proton and electron, both have 11 because it has atomic number 11. And for neutron, it should be 12 because your 23 minus 11 gives you 12. Now, how about our second element, oxygen? Oxygen has atomic number 8 and mass number 16. So, following 8 man mnemonics, your proton and electron number should be equal to atomic number. So, what's your answer? Yes, it should be 8. Now, how about the neutron number? What is your neutron number? So, following 8 man mnemonics, that should be mass minus atomic number to give you neutron. So, that's going to be 16 minus 8. That should give you 8. So, how was your answers? Did you get all of it correctly? Very good! Now, if you are not able to get all the answers correctly, don't worry. Just review this video and then try to answer the exercise again. Okay, based on our activity earlier, is it possible for an atom to have an equal number of protons and electrons? Yes, it is possible. If you made use of the FET simulation activity, you can clearly see that atoms are possible to lose or gain electrons. When this happens, the atom becomes an ion. Now, once the number of protons and electrons becomes equal again, you are going to get again your neutral atom. So how do you achieve a neutral atom? It's either you lose or gain electrons. Now, if you take a look at it, we are like atoms. We need to be, humans need to be neutral, just like atoms. If we lose or gain electrons, that's the time that we become unstable or we become an ion. So in order for us to become a stable and neutral person, then we need to lose or gain some electrons. So how are we going to lose or gain our own electrons? So basically, we have to let go of any negativity in our lives 
and get more positivity so that we can achieve a neutral state and in, in result, we will get our peace of mind and our happy life. Let us summarize today's session. Make sure to remember the following points. Your atom is made of subatomic particles. These are the protons, electrons, and neutrons. Your subatomic particles have different masses. Your protons and neutrons have the same relative mass of 1 AMU, but your electrons are smaller with the relative mass of 0 AMU or atomic mass unit. For your subatomic particles, you have your protons that are positively charged, your electrons that are negatively charged, and your neutrons that are neutral since they have zero charge. Now, these particles are located in a specific area of your atom. Protons and neutrons are always found at the center in what we call the nucleus, while your electrons are always found surrounding the nucleus in an electron cloud. Now, in order to identify the number of protons of an element, you need to have your atomic number. And this atomic number will now determine the identity of your atom or your element. For me to check if you got our lesson for today, I'm going to give you an exit slip. So for those who have internet access, you are going to take an online quiz. So the link for your quiz is in the description box below. Just click it and you will be directed towards it. For those who have no internet access, you answer the given uh, exit slip together with your activity sheets and uh, have it submitted together with your modules as you return it. For your performance task, you are going to choose one of the projects listed below about the structure of an atom. Make sure that you include in your project all information like what are the three subatomic particles, what are their masses, their electrical charge, and location for you to complete it. So for group one, for visual learners, you are going to choose if you're going to make a poster or infographics in a one-fourth size white cartoon. For the group of auditory learners, you are going to create your own song about atoms and then record yourself while singing it. And make sure to send me a copy of your video. For kinesthetic learners, you are going to construct a 2D model of your atom. You will make use of one fourth size white cartolina and small circles to represent your subatomic particles. Just make sure that you will have three different colors and then four instructions follow the, the instructions listed in your activity sheet. That's it for today and I will see you in our next session. This is your teacher, Lara.